The church does not need more popular preaching, but more pungent, challenging, convicting messages. The success of a preacher is not through eloquent preaching, but ceaseless prayer on bended knees. Therefore, be poor in the spirit, but not in the vocabulary of the divine order. Never allow temporary trivialities to displace eternal values. Our topic this morning is the leadership of the Holy Spirit. The leadership of the Holy Spirit. Have we allowed the Holy Spirit to be the leader in our lives? You might be a leader, but who is your leader? Who leads you? Do we allow Holy Spirit to lead us into the path of righteousness, path of holiness, path of sincerity and honesty, so that whatever we do in life, we bring glory to God? There are many people who never even understood the work the Holy Spirit did right from the beginning of creation. Therefore, we're going to dig into all this. The leadership of the Holy Spirit in the New and Old Testament. The Holy Spirit, the third person in the Holy Trinity, was active and present at the creation, hovering over the unordered earthly condition. Turn your Bible a moment in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 2. Genesis, chapter 1, verse 2. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The earth was without form. Holy Spirit was there at work in the beginning of creation. Even when the world, the earth was unordered. Everything was just in this array. But the Holy Spirit was moving. The Holy Spirit is the origin of supernatural abilities. As the Bible told us also in the book of Genesis chapter 41 verse 38, it was the Holy Spirit that enabled Joseph to interpret the dream that made the king to say, who else can we entrust this responsibility? Who has the Spirit of God upon him? So when you operate in dream interpretation, and when you operate in understanding the mystery of the gospel, when you understand the things of God that seems to be hidden, it's because of the revelation of the Holy Spirit. And that is why it's important that whatever you do, always ask for the leadership of the Holy Spirit to be present in your life in whatever you are doing, so that you don't move in flesh. Many times people say, well, the Holy Spirit told me, God told me, all this a total bluff. When they are not even sure who is Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the giver of all autistic skill. There are many people who are lacking skill in their lives today. Holy Spirit is able to impart those skills and talents in your life. That you become a blessing to those around you and also to the body of Christ. When you turn your Bible a moment in the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus chapter 31. Look at verse 2 through 5. Fantastic. This will help you to always get acquainted with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Exodus chapter 31 verse 2 through 5. See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Ur, the son of Ur of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. Fantastic. This is God speaking. Telling Moses that he has imparted his spirit upon Bezali, so that he's able to do the work of craftsmanship through artistic design. Maybe you are lacking something in your life. Maybe there's something you are struggling in your, in your workplace. Maybe there's something that you've been trying all these years 
to grasp. You're not able. This can give you a kind of encouragement to know that it is the will of God to impact with you that knowledge. It is the will of God for you to operate in that very field whereby God Almighty will begin to bless you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Maybe there's something, the task given to you, you're not able to do it. Not until you understand the blessings of the Holy Spirit in your life. And allow Holy Spirit of God to teach you and give you insight in those so-called secrets which you do not know. When we go also in the book of Judges, chapter 3, verse 9 through 10, Holy Spirit is a source of power and strength. It is a source of power and strength that God will use you to defeat the enemies. God will use you to bring glory to his name and shame to the devil because he is the source of strength and he is the source of power. He takes you beyond your limitations. Maybe there is something that it seems you cannot break through in your life. Every time you have been defeated on that area of your life. Every time it seems that you have been. The maximum you have gone is just breaking even. It is the will of God for you to break through. Because the Holy Spirit is there to give you the necessary strength. Necessary power to overcome those weaknesses. That's why he is there. In the book of Micah, chapter 3, verse 8, Holy Spirit is the one who helps us in meditation of God's word and also message. Micah, chapter 3, verse 8. He's the one who helps us to understand God's word and messages. So you tap from there and be able to grasp what God is revealing to you, what God is speaking to you concerning any situation or circumstance. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 25 through 29, it is the Holy Spirit who helps us in cleansing our hearts for a holy living. I will pour out, sprinkle water, and give you a heart of flesh, and give you a new spirit, a new heart, the Holy Spirit. Maybe there's something that always pollutes your heart. You easily fall into lustfulness. You cannot stand your ground in holiness when you are dealing with opposite gender. Holy Spirit can help you to cleanse your heart, renew your mind, change your attitude, so that you become a vessel of honor and glory. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. In the book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 5, Holy Spirit is the one who regenerates, who regenerates us. Holy Spirit. That is the work of salvation. He will regenerate us. We become regenerated people. Believers of high standard. Many people never understood the work of the Holy Ghost. That's why they are living life of yo-yo. They think to stand for God is not easy. Oh, Christianity is a chore. It's not easy. It's, not a, it's a lie. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Holy Spirit is there. That's why Jesus knew it. He said, I am going to the Father, but I send you a comforter. I'll send you a helper. The one that will help us in all our weaknesses. So that we'll not be falling down to our weaknesses every moment. In the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. It is the Holy Spirit that sanctifies us. Remember, sanctification is the second work of grace. The first work of grace is salvation. Second work of grace is sanctification. And the third work of grace is justification. So it's the Holy God that sanctifies you. <clears throat> Sets you apart for a holy order. Many of us have received salvation, but we never understood the work of sanctification. Whereby you begin to go according to God's word and go contrary to sin. Because you are no more turning your face to the old ways anymore. But you are now turning your face to the right part. And because many people are struggling with this, that's why they think everyone is like that. When they lie, they think everybody will lie. When they deceive, they think everybody will deceive. 
When they manipulate, they think everybody manipulates because that is their nature. But in sanctification, <clears throat> you are set apart from those. You are no more doing those things that you used to do. It's like taking a child, putting the child in a bed of water. After washing the child, in sanctification, you take that child out from the bed of water and tower the child. So sanctification is setting you apart from the dirty water. You are no more getting involved with those dirtiness anymore. You are no more playing with mud. Then justification is like taking a child out of the water to a dry place, dry the person up, then you put powder. And you see the mummies who do that. They carry the child and that is justification. You have been justified before the Lord. So these are the work of the grace, salvation, sanctification, and justification. So Holy Ghost is the one that sanctifies you and sets you apart. In the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 4, <clears throat> Holy Spirit completely and profoundly indwell in us. He is inside of us. Therefore we speak the language of the Spirit. He's inside of us. So sad. The people said, they are baptized in the Holy Ghost, feeling the Holy Ghost to the brim. But many times, false words come out of their mouth. Vagarity. Evil words come out of their mouth just because they are angry. It should not be God's people. If you have been set apart, set free, learn to tame your tongue. Don't allow the devil to use it. No matter how you've been pushed to the walls, no matter how you've been angered, Hold on to God. Let the Lord fight for you. When you allow him to fight for you, you will see great miracles of victory. But many times the flesh will act, fight, fight. That's why when Apostle Paul was writing to the church of Galatians, <clears throat> in the book of Galatians chapter 5, he said two things are fighting in you. The flesh and the spirit. And each other want to outwit the other one. But you need to be strong in the spirit. Those things that go contrary to God's word, don't do them. Even if you've been hurt and wounded and disappointed. Many times, what deceives mankind is emotions. Emotions. I, 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 I don't like how, I, I don't feel good. Well, your feeling might not be right. So don't think that your feeling might be right. We don't go by feelings, but we go by faith. Believing what God has spoken and holding on to God's word, not by what you see, because seeing can be deceiving. So Holy Spirit is indwelling us. He controls us, our emotions, our thoughts. Have you ever asked yourself this question? When you are alone, what goes into your head? What kind of thought do you have? What do you think? Sometimes when you ask me, what are you thinking? They say, oh, I'm not thinking, I'm just floating. Well, be careful when you float, because you can float the wrong side. They say they are floating. If you have nothing to think, that's why God has blessed you with the language of heaven, speaking in tongues. If you don't know what to do, speak in tongues. Or worship him and praise him. There are many songs you can sing in your heart. Instead of sitting down and thinking, things that will bring high blood pressure in your life. In the New Testament, let's see what the Holy Ghost did. In the book of John, chapter 16, verse 13 through 14, Holy Spirit declared the truth about Jesus, and he glorified Jesus. He speaks the truth about Jesus and glorified Jesus. So if you have the Holy Ghost in you, you must begin to speak the truth about Jesus and also glorify him. Glorify your name, glorify your name. What a joy that will be. Then you sit down and begin to think of what you think people are saying about you when it is not true. But they will try to stir you up to be angry with one another and to destroy other people's life. In the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Holy Spirit induce power for gospel proclamation. He is the one that gives all the power to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why when Luke was recording this in the book of Acts 1 8, he says, when the Holy Ghost is come upon you, 
you shall receive power and you become witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria and almost part of the world. You begin to do something for God because of the power of God in your life. When you have the power in you, you will not allow devil to have upper hand in any situation. You always manifest that spirit that is in you. The spirit of truth, the spirit of joy, the spirit of peace, the spirit of calmness in the time of turmoil. Because that spirit is there. That's power that takes you beyond your limitations. That's what Holy Ghost does in our lives. In the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 5. It is the Holy Ghost who pours out God's love in our hearts. He is the one who pours out God's love in our hearts. So we can begin to love those around us. Love the unloved, touch the untouched, and teach the untouched love of God. The love we're talking about is not love that always looks for something to gain. We're talking about love that passes all understanding. Love that you can't even comprehend because it's beyond your comprehension. Love that gives before it receives. Love that do not expect anything in return when it does its work. Love that bears all things, believes all things, endures all things. Love that is not easily inflated. That's the love we're talking about. Love that covered multitude of sin. That's the love we are talking about. Love that speak no ill of any man. Love that assassinate people's character. Love that willing to share itself in multiplication. Love that dies to itself and allows Jesus to resurrect. Love that do not find fault. Love that do not point fingers at people. That the love that Holy Ghost has spread upon our hearts. Love that's self-sacrificing. Love that cries when others are crying. And laugh when others are laughing. Love that rejoices in people's happiness. That's the love we're talking about. Love that considers other people's welfare. And participate. In order to be a helping hand to others. That's the love that God has poured upon our heart through the Holy Ghost. That's the love. Not the one that tried to criticize. Love that says, if you want me to love, you must love me first. That's not the love we're talking about. Love that do not boast. When somebody loves you, you know that they really love you. You don't need somebody, you don't need a prophet to say, Thou said the Lord, this guy loves you. You will know it. Because the love flows. Love is not foolishness. That's why I say, oh, but he's very strict. We have to be strict in order to live righteously. Love does not make you to be foolish. But to act in wisdom. So that's the love the Holy Ghost poured upon our hearts. Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Holy Ghost makes intercession for us. <clears throat> that's the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Rome and told him in Romans chapter 8 verse 26 that Holy Ghost intercedes for us even while we are weak. He intercedes for us. So when you have the Holy Ghost leadership in your life, you will intercede for others. Pray for them. You don't need to tell them that you are praying for them. Let God reveal to them that you are praying for them. But not you sounding your trumpet. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 11. It is Holy Ghost, 1 Corinthians 12, 12, verse 4 through 11. It is Holy Ghost that impart gift of God in our lives. The gift of prophecy. The gift of revelation. The gift of word of knowledge. The gift of word of wisdom. The gift of interpretation of tongues. The gift of tongues. The gift of diverse tongues. It is the Holy Ghost that distributes this gift in our lives. That we are able to use this gift 
to edify the body of Christ, to strengthen the believers, to build them up. Holy Spirit. Well, how will it be that we always speak in tongues and dance in the Spirit and prophesy? But beyond, beside those, we still have heart full of hatred, full of hurts and wounds. Why not tell the Holy Ghost? Fill me with joy and love. It's one thing to allow the Holy Spirit to distribute those gifts in our lives by his leadership. It's another thing to produce the fruit that make us to know that we are people feeling the Holy Ghost. In the book of Galatians, <clears throat> Galatians chapter 5, I would like to read that because I love that. And I always ask God to let this very blessing be upon my own life. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22 through 23. Holy God enables us to live life of spiritual fruit for the glory of God. It is Holy Spirit that gives us this fruit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This nine fruit of the Spirit must be evident in the life of a person who claims to be filled in the Holy Ghost. Not just speaking in tongues and say, oh, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost, I speak in tongues. Praise the Lord for that. But we are talking about the fruit. Do you show love, joy? Do you have the peace that passes all understanding? Do you have the long-suffering attitude, patience in a time of turmoil? Do you have goodness of God? Show you for goodness of God and faithfulness. You are faithful in small things. Bigger things will be given to you. When you are put in position, you say, I will render all my faithfulness unto God. Not saying, I will throw in my towel. You are gentle to everyone. Gentle. Gentleness. Self-control in the things of life. Self-control. There are many people who don't have self-control. Oh, wait on. We are in Christmas season. Uh oh. Shopping, 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 shopping. She will shop until they faint. Some will eat, eat, eat until they don't know what to eat anymore. Self-control in the things of life. Self-control in the things of life. Very important. If you don't control yourself, something will control you. <clears throat> So these are the fruit of the Spirit. <clears throat> when we claim that we have the Spirit of God in us, we must produce the fruit. In the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16, Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus and reminded them that it is the Holy Ghost who strengthens our inner man. Our inner man is strengthened by the Holy Ghost. The you in you will be strengthened by the Holy Ghost. The inner man, nobody knows. Only you know the inner man of yours. It is the Holy Spirit that strengthens you. Many times people say God spoke to them. You ask them, how did they hear? Some say, point their head. Some point their stomach. Some point their heart. You ask them, where is the inner man? Where is your inner man? Where God has spoken through you by the Holy Ghost, they can't even find it. It's simple. If you want to know your inner man, listen. Look at me here. I look handsome this morning. Just look at me. Sing a song. Glorify your name. Hum it. Mm, 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 mm. Don't sing it. Don't hum it. Sing it inside. That's the inner man. There are times when voice there will be so louder even than what you hear. I repeat. Sing a song. Glorify your name. Hum it. Mm, 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 mm. Dancing. Don't hum it, but sing it inside. That's the inner man. Many times, God will speak it's so loud that you will begin to, wow, I can hear it. That's the inner man. So it's not here, it's not there, it's not here, it's not there, it's not here. 
That's the place. That's the inner man. And there are times when he wants to do something, it seems the voice that is shaking. And boom, boom, boom. Don't do that. You are being warned not to go beyond that. Stop. Hold on. So God strengthens your inner man by the Holy Ghost. In the book of 1 Peter, that's a good one. 1 Peter chapter 1. Uh, 2 Peter, please. 2 Peter chapter 1. Look at verse 21. A powerful verse. How Holy Spirit inspired the writing of the Holy Scriptures. It says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That word moved in Greek is called Pharaoh, which means they were airborne in the Holy Ghost. That word moved in Greek is Pharaoh, which means they were airborne in the Holy Ghost when they begin to write the Holy Scriptures. So it is the Holy Spirit that inspires men whom God used to write the word. They were airborne in the Holy Ghost. So you get inspiration by the Spirit of God. Not by your thinking, but by the inspiration of God through the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 19 through 21, Holy Ghost controls the movements of all believers. There are times when God will not want you to go to a particular place. Holy Ghost will always restrain you. He is the one who will lead you to go. But many times, some people are stubborn. Even when they know that they're not, they not supposed to go there. When they know they're not supposed to listen to those things, they just be stubborn. Holy Ghost controls people's movement. In the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 2 through 4, it is the Holy Ghost who help us in selection of leaders. Holy Spirit. He helps us to select leaders. Those who are to serve the Lord. Those who are to serve in whatever capacity they are. Not man. If you can remember when God told the prophet to go to the house of Jesse. That he had chosen for himself a king. The prophet went there thinking that it would be Eliab or any other son of Jesse. Until God had to rebuke him and said, you look outwardly, but I don't look outwardly. I look at the heart. Sometimes somebody can look good to be chosen as a leader. But God doesn't want that person. So it depends on how we trust in God and allow him to give us insight by the Holy Ghost to select who will be a leader. So that we can be ruled with grace and mercy of God and not under power of dictatorship or taskmasters that we can be led by God. Persons who have heart of God, who have the love of God, because to lead is to love. To love is to lead. So when you begin to love, then you begin to lead. And when you begin to live, actually begin to serve. So to love is to serve. To serve is to lead, and to lead is to wash others' feet. First must be love. If there's no love, you cannot serve. So to love is to serve. When you begin to love people, you serve them. When you begin to serve them, actually you are leading them. When you are leading them, you begin to wash their feet. That's what Jesus taught us. So you must know that. And that is why it's important that we must allow the Holy Ghost to help us to select those who are to lead us. So that we can serve him better and serve him with all our heart, soul, and spirit. In the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 6 through 7, it is the Holy Ghost who chooses the field of evangelism operation. Holy Ghost is the one who will choose for you the area you need to go for evangelism. As we saw in the book of Acts 16, 6 and 7. Holy Ghost leads us to the path where we need to operate in evangelism, so that the name of the Lord be glorified, so the demons will flee, because God's army has come in. When we look at the early church, there are many of them who were baptized in the Holy Ghost, so if you're not baptized, you are going to ask the Lord to baptize you in the Holy Ghost, even this morning. 
The Bible made it clear in the book of Luke chapter 2, verse 25 through 32, that Simeon was filled in the Holy Ghost. He came all the way. Holy Ghost led him to come to the temple for the dedication of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In the book of Acts 2, verse 1 through 4, believers at Pentecost were baptized in the Holy Ghost. The Bible said that it came like a rushing wind. It came. Mighty power of God came down and stood upon them like a tongue of fire, and they began to speak in tongues as they were giving the utterance. They did not speak according to their own will, but by the will of the Holy Ghost. In the book of Acts chapter 8, verse 14 through 18, the Bible also told us how the Samaritan believers were baptized in the Holy Ghost. They were filled in the Holy Ghost and they spoke in tongues. Many times people say, well, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. Church, listen. If you are feeling the Holy Ghost, the evidence is that you must speak in tongues. That's clear. In the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 44 through 48, Cornelius and group were filled in the Holy Ghost. While the apostle was still speaking, the Bible said the Holy Ghost came upon them. And the apostle asked, who can stop them from being baptized with water now? Which means... You may be baptized in the Holy Ghost before you're baptized in the water. That's true. Some may be baptized in the water before they're filling the Holy Ghost. Some may be filling the Holy Ghost before they are baptized in the water. In the book of Acts chapter 19, verse 6 and 7, the Bible told us how the Ephesians believers were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Believers in Ephesus, they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Luke chapter 1 verse 15 talks about how John the Baptist were, was filled in the Holy Ghost right from the womb. He was filled in the Holy Ghost right from the womb. Luke chapter 1 verse 15. In the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 1, Holy Ghost was upon Jesus Christ. Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost without measure. He was filled with the Holy Ghost the Acts chapter 2 verse 4, the Bible told how the 120 disciples were filled in the Holy Ghost while they were waiting in the upper room. Power of God came down upon them and they were filled in the Holy Ghost. Peter the Apostle was filled in the Holy Ghost as the Bible told in the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 8 and also verse 31. He was filled in the Holy Ghost. You know why we are bringing up these things? There are many people who are still doubting about the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Spirit. So you need to go and do your own work and see what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. Stephen the Evangelist was filled in the Holy Ghost. The book of Acts chapter 7 verse 55. He was filled in the Holy Ghost. Barnabas was filled in the Holy Ghost. The book of Acts chapter 11 verse 24. And also Paul the Apostle was filled in the Holy Ghost, as we saw in the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 9 and verse 52. These are men. God baptized and filled in the Holy Ghost. They went around doing good, bringing glory to God, breaking the power of demons, chains and shackles upon people's life. Many times people ask, they are not sure of being children of God. You don't doubt your faith. Why do you doubt your belief and believe your doubts? The Bible made it clear in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 16 that as many as receive him, those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons and daughters of God. They are sons of God. So it is the Holy Spirit that bears witness of our sonship. Romans 8 16 tells us the Holy Ghost bear witness of our Adoption. We've been adopted in the household of God. At your time, you can read also Galatians 4, 6. 1 John chapter 3, verse 24. 1 John chapter 4, verse 13. And 1 John chapter 5, verse 6. Holy Spirit bears witness of our sonship. We've been adopted in the household of God. God Almighty also gave us assurance concerning our adoption. There are many people who don't even know that the Lord has given assurance that you are his child. 
If you remember in the book of John chapter 1 verse 2 of the Bible, as many as receive him, he gave them power to become sons of God. God gave you the assurance of being his child. And also in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 15, if you are led by the Spirit, you are sons of God. And it did not stop there. Even Moses repeated the same thing in Deuteronomy 14.2. 14, we are sons of God. Prophet Isaiah repeated the same thing in Isaiah 63 verse 16 and Isaiah 43 verse 1. That we are sons of God. We belong to God. Hosea the prophet repeated it. Hosea 11 verse 1. Ezekiel 16.8. All repeated the same thing that we are sons of God. And when Apostle Paul was writing to the church of Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, it says, Depart from evil, don't be part of evil doing. Then you become sons and daughters of God. Apostle Paul wrote that. That tells you when we depart from evil, we maintain the assurance that we have from God that we are his people. That is a question here. Do you have doubt about your faith? There are people, when they are sick, they are scared that they are going to die because they are not sure where they are going. They pull out from evil. Galatians 3, 26 tells us the same thing. Galatians 4, 5, and 6 told us the same thing. And Ephesians 1, 5, the same thing we receive. That's the assurance that we receive. Apostle Paul stated all this to reassure believers that you have assurance with God that you are a child of God. And that's who you are. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. That's who you are. In whatever situation you are, just remember that. Now let's look at the merit that we have for having spiritual relationship with God. It's always good for us to realize that it's good to have a spiritual relationship with God. Don't break your relationship with God because of the things of the world. Many people are good, but the one thing they cannot stand hearing something about themselves. Devil will use that to destroy you. When devil know that you're sensitive or hearing some bad things about yourself, he will continue to make you to hear. But it's time for you to know if you learn this. Let he that is named by the name of the Lord depart from evil. Don't do evil. So if people falsely accuse you, so be it. Praise on. As I always tell you, you know why people criticize you? Because they could not match you. If they can match you, they won't criticize you. So as long as they cannot match you, they will criticize you. They try to break your will. The worst thing any man or woman will do to you is breaking your will. Don't let anybody to break. The will is what God has given to you to move forward. Don't let anyone to break your will. When they break your will, you are completely paralyzed from neck down. Don't. Don't. Pray on. Pray on with God. So when we have spiritual relationship with God, we will surely obey him. Matthew chapter 12 verse 50. We must surely obey him. Spiritual relationship with God. You'll obey him in public. you obey him in your private life. you obey him in your words. you obey him in your actions. you obey him. Secondly, when we have spiritual relationship with God, we become as with Christ. Join A with Christ. Romans 8, 17. Which means whatever Christ has from God belongs to us. And that's our pride. That we have everything with Christ. Whatever God has for him. When we have spiritual relationship with God, every hindrance is removed. Ephesians 2, 19. We become sons and daughters and citizens of heaven no more strangers to God's kingdom. Because we've been translated from the kingdom of devil, kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of light. And that's our joy. Wherever you go, there will be victory. You will see with your eyes the destruction of the evil. But nothing will touch you because the Psalm 91 will be fulfilled in your life. If you fall in your front, fall on your back, left and right, it will not touch you. Because you have made Jehovah your shield. Glory! When you have spiritual relationship with God, there will be total unity in the body. Ephesians 3 verse 15. 
total unity. You'll not fight anyone. You'll not be an Ishmaelite. Every hand is against you and your hand is every, every, against everyone. You'll be Israelite, a prince unto God. That's who you'll be. When you have relationship with God, spiritual relationship, you will be in the brotherhood with Christ. Hebrew chapter 2 verse 11. You know what a joy. The Bible said, those whom he saved, he called them brethren. You become a brother to Jesus Christ. Not a servant anymore, a brother. A brother. That's something that we must know. You know what it is, this brother, this brother, that. But let me tell you something. Some people will say brother this, but it doesn't come from heart. Brother that, sister that, brother that. But when you call brother, it should come from the heart. This is brother this. This is sister this. Which means you know that person. Sometimes say, brother your name? Brother, brother what? Brother what? Sister what? Sister what? When you call somebody brother, that means you really know that person. That's your brother in the Lord. And do you know the relationship you have in the Lord is more than the relationship you have in the world because your sibling is just physically related because of father, mother. But brethren in the Lord, you are spiritually related because of Jesus Christ. And that's the blood that is more than any other blood that brought you and somebody together. Before we close this morning, let us look at the danger of sinning against the Holy Ghost. I need to touch this. Prophet Isaiah warned us about rebelling against the Spirit of God. In the book of Isaiah 63 verse 10. Don't sin, don't rebel against the Holy Ghost. Matthew, the task collector also repeated it in Matthew chapter 12 verse 31. We must not blaspheme the Holy Ghost. When you see miracle of God, don't claim that, well, this is demonic. That blasphemy, the Holy Ghost. The Bible told us in the book of Mark chapter 3 verse 29. All of that sin will be forgiven of mankind, but the sin against the Holy Ghost will not be forgiven. Don't blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. In the book of Acts chapter 5 verse 3, we are told not to lie to the Holy Spirit. Don't sin against the Holy Ghost. You rather keep quiet. I always say it. If you know your words will offend, please stitch your mouth. Don't open your big mouth. If you know your words will offend people, don't talk. Many of our Agaga we have, many people have diarrhea in their mouth. Anything that goes in comes out. It's not good. It hurts people. It makes people feel uncomfortable with you. We shouldn't. We must learn how to tame our tongue. We must learn how to keep ourselves. Maintain your respect and your honor and dignity in every aspect of life, including your words. Let every word that comes out of your mouth minister grace to the hearer. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 30, we are warned not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. You know how you grieve the Holy Ghost? When you begin to say those things you're not supposed to say. When you begin to cut people down. When you begin to speak against God's word. When you are unnecessarily angry with somebody. When you're suspicious. All this grieves the Holy Ghost. When you're lying. When you're manipulating with your words. What I say here is not what I say there. There you know, are many people have fucked tongue. But they see it's not what they said here. You are grieving the Holy Ghost. When you are necessarily angry with people, why must you be angry? When you're a fault finder, picking on people, judgmental attitude, all this grieves the Holy Ghost. Stop judging people. Leave them alone. You may not like the way they do things. That does not mean that your own way is better. <laughs> you may not like the way they do things, but that doesn't mean your own way is better. That's why it's good for us not to grieve the Holy Ghost. And there are better ways to say something than being too outrageous with your words. Some people think that by showing our anger, that means we are serious. That's not true. 
You can speak the truth without being sourish. <laughs> you can speak the truth without being sourish. You can be serious without being sour. God's people. Then that will build us together. It's good for people to know your character, know what you are. Principle without authority is like building without foundation. And authority without principles is like also building your castle in the, in the air. It's good that you are known by what you will do and what you will not do, both in spirit, in spirit and physical, both in private and in public. You say no, sorry. You can say no without being angry. You can say no without feeling guilty. You just say no to something that doesn't glorify God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, we must not quench the Holy Ghost. You can quench the Holy Ghost by the way you act contrary to God's word. You can quench the Holy Ghost by not obeying the instinct that comes from God. You can quench the Holy Ghost but not letting the Holy Ghost to move freely in the lives of people. You can quench the Holy Ghost by you doing something that God did not permit you to do. You can quench the Holy Ghost. Maybe God had poured down spirit upon you when you begin to do things in your own pride. You quench the Holy Ghost. So that is why it's important. Let us allow the leadership of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in our words, in our actions, in our deeds, in our decision making, in everything that we do, the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Allow him to be preeminent. You will know how precious the Holy Spirit is when you allow his leadership to be preeminent in your life. God's people. This is what God wants us to know. And this is something that we need to think and rethink over. Therefore, if you're here this morning and you never received the Holy Ghost, as we stand on our feet, I will tell you, we are going to pray for you. When you hear the voice of God in your heart, in your heart, let's stand on our feet.